A viewer had asked uh, on a previous video about testing an EL84 on the, the uh, BNK uh, 650 with the uh, 610 test panel, and I think I mentioned in that video that his intention was to wire up one of the spare sockets. And so I did a, a, a video on testing newer tubes on the 650. Well, that viewer, uh, his name is Terrence, and thanks a lot, Terrence, uh, sent me a tube to test and asked me if I would test it on the uh, BNK650, which I'm very happy to do. The tube he sent me is a 6BQ5, which is a direct replacement for an EL84. In fact, 6BQ5, I found out after my last video, is actually the American type number for an EL84. Well, an EL84 is a beam pentode, and a beam pentode is used in the output circuits of uh, tube amplifiers. Now, the uh, EL84 was originally developed for use in hi-fi uh, tube amplifiers, and there is a whole history there, and maybe if people are interested, I'll go back and resurrect some of the history of uh, hi-fi amplifiers, the Williamson, the Ultra, uh, linear, the all of the different uh, circuits that were developed back in those days to try to, to produce a, uh, a very linear hi-fi tube amp. But that's not what this is about. This is about testing tubes. And I thought that I might use it also as a little bit of a teaching lesson about tube testers. Now here is the V and K with the EL84 inserted in the 610 test panel. The test panel is set up according to the directions. You see the little red dot there by the 6BQ5, and then uh, across is the uh, settings. So let's turn on the tester, let the tube warm up, and then we'll go ahead and test it. Here is the uh, the meter. Uh, I've waited uh, about uh, 40 or so seconds since the last segment and I'm going to uh, use it in test one position. There's only one test on this tube and I have the sensitivity control set to the recommended value which is 60 or 58 and you will notice that you get a reading on this tube, barely in the good, but it is a good tube, and or at least a test good on the B and K. The, uh, the next thing that I would like to do is I would like to uh, continue this forward through the next two models of B and K testers, the, six, uh, the uh, 700 and the 707. So let me set up the uh, 700 to show you how it tests there and the fact that it's tested in a different way. This is the BNK 700 tester and this tube is tested in socket 23. Uh, as you see once again a, a voltage of 6 socket 23 and a 50, 68 sensitivity. Sensitivity is set to 68 and the heater to uh, 6 volts. The tube you see over here, we test it for shorts, then for grid emission. And you may notice there's a slight amount of grid emission. This tester is very sensitive for grid emission. Then test one. And you notice it reads almost identically. Now, this tester and the 707, which I'm going to show you next, were calibrated almost identically. So I don't expect to see any difference in the 707 either, but I was doing this in part to show you that among models of tube testers, you usually get very similar results if they are properly calibrated. So now let's move over and try this same thing on the 707. Here is the BNK 707 tester. It's electrically almost the same as the 700 I just showed you. And 
the except for the cosmetic differences, blue instead of brown, black, and so on, there are some some new wiring in this unit for newer tubes. But other than that, it's basically the 700. And you may notice that the the tube is tested the same way: six, 23, and 68 on the sensitivity. So I have the sensitivity set to 68, six volts on the filament. We'll turn the power on. Now, this tube is already fairly warm. Shorts, grid emission, test one. And now watch, this is the tube warming up. And you see in just a few seconds, it reaches oh, almost identically with the 700. Now the 700 and the 707 are calibrated to exactly the same standards. They use the same procedures, same voltages, and so on. So you would expect to get comparable results between those two. However, I, after doing this, I decided that it would be neat to go ahead and test it on sort of the gold standard. The one everybody uh, figures is the is the right tester for the period, the Hickok Model 600. Now this was a 19, late 50s into the 60s uh, tube tester, and many people consider it to be the, the, the right tube tester. Uh, it can test almost anything that was made up to about 1965 or 66, uh, except it will not test some of the compactrons that were used in TVs in the mid 60s and, and later. But uh, I decided to test it on this and I'll, I'll warn you ahead of time, I got a little bit of a surprise. Now it reminded me of a time that a uh, uh, fairly well-known musician uh, asked me, what is the best tube tester to take on tour? And my answer was somebody who can tell a good joke because you don't get mad at people who tell a good joke. And you will get mad at tube testers because they just really aren't uh, the end all. So let me show you why that I made that comment. It wasn't intended to be flippant. The, uh, actually, my advice to him was carry a, a set of spare tubes for all your amps and just change them out until it works. Okay, here's the Hickok uh, 600A. I'll show you the setup in just a second, but first, when you, uh, one of the first things you should always do when you have inserted the tube and got it properly set up, you turn the power on and then you do a line adjust. Now, you don't need to do that on the BNK tube testers, and the reason is that the tube testers made by BNK had a special bridge circuit that was designed to compensate for changes in line voltage. It works pretty good. There's nothing that's quite as good as setting a control, but it's a pretty good circuit, so they don't need this. But the uh, Hickok, you do. And you adjust it where up here you see it says line test, and you set it right on the line test line. That means that your calibration which you also do at exactly that setting, will be good across a variety of tubes. So the next thing you do is, or actually you do this before you do the line test, is you set it up and you notice here is the same one. This is called an EL84, but you may notice over here the, uh, the person who put this book together has uh, said this is a 6BQ5. And you set it up according to these uh, letters and numbers, EV27930, and then a bias of 14, and a sensitivity, or English, of 91. So those are, respectively, EV, and then grid, plate, screen, cathode, suppressor. So once you've done that, you then turn the tester on and you go through a series of shorts tests. 
There are five of those. And then at the end of that process, you set this knob to the quality position and you press GM. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but it's very, very weak on this tester. So let's take a closer look at the uh, at how this tester is set up. Okay, E and uh, V are uh, to set up the filament connections. The next one is the uh, grid, which in this case is set to 2. Then the plate, which is set to 7. The uh, screen, which is set to 9. The cathode, which is set to 3. The suppressor is set to 0. In a minute, I'm going to show you the settings for this tube on an 800. And once again, there is a little surprise. But let's follow up on that low reading on the meter. The reason that I've gone to this position, which is on the side, is so that you can see the bias setting as well as the sensitivity setting. You may recall that the sensitivity that is called for is 91. And that's where this is set. So let's push this, the, the GM again, and now let's change the sensitivity until we get about the same reading we got on the B and Ks, which is about there. You may notice that the sensitivity control is around 54. You see it's at 54. Uh, and once again, I call it the sensitivity control. They call it English. Uh, I don't know why they call it that. But anyway, so, so what can you deduce from this? Well, if this is a good EL84, it should have tested good at the settings that Hickok suggested, but it doesn't. So what's going on? Well, this shows you a little bit of what the problem with tube testers of the day. Even though this was regarded as the gold standard, and even though if you watched my uh, video on testing the 12AX7, you discover that on the 12AX7, this tester tests exactly right, whereas the BNKs all test low. Here we have exactly the reverse. The BNKs test correctly, the Hickok tests low. Once again, it has, it's largely to do with the setting of the sensitivity control. So I thought, well, wonder if maybe they made a mistake and in a future unit they fixed the problem. So I got the, the tube data out for the Hickok 800 and here again you see is an EL84 and you see it says EV but here instead of 2793 it says 2713 and then a 6. Well, this makes no sense at all. Let me show you why. 2713 would have pin 1 as the uh, screen grid, but pin 1 has no connection on an EL84. So I thought, well, maybe the arrangement of the switches is different on an 800. I don't have an 800, so I couldn't look. So I got out the 800 manual and looked. And no, you may notice that the fifth entry is the screen. You see it underlined in red there, just as it is on the uh, 600. So what's going on here? Well, now I think you see why that I told the, <laughs> uh, the red-headed uh, guy that you shouldn't even take a tube tester along. It's just extra weight. Tube testers were really intended for, for servicemen in the home who could not spend much time and couldn't carry all the tubes for all the TVs that existed. The reason I suggested that his band carry replacement tubes instead of a tube tester is the surest way to know if a tube works is to plug it into the circuit and see. 
And so generally what most uh, bands do with uh, tube amps is they just, when they have a problem, they just unplug all the tubes, plug in a known good set, and then put the old tubes back in one by one until the problem comes back. Half the time the problem never does come back and they wind up with the same old tubes back in it. It was just maybe a tube got loose in the socket or there was an uh, input cable that wasn't plugged in correctly or whatever. But that's actually the best way to test tube equipment is with a complete set of tubes and just replace them and then start putting back the old tubes until you find which one was the actual bad tube. Uh, by the way, a lot of servicemen of the day did it that way too. They just used a tube tester as an indicator. So, so what's the conclusion on Hickok? Well, they make mistakes like everybody else. Obviously, the listing on the Hickok 800 is flat wrong. You can't test an EL84 using pin 1 as the screen grid. But the sensitivity control problem on the 600A may be that either somebody made a mistake, might have written down the wrong reading, maybe they had it at 51 and for some reason wrote down 91. Once again, I don't know why, but I will tell you that these roll charts, which were sort of the, the uh, way that people would look up a tube were updated frequently, sometimes five or six, seven times a year. And the reason is not only to introduce new tubes, but also because they kept finding mistakes in the old listings. So I hope this has been instructive in knowing how to interpret what you read on a tube tester. Take it with a grain of salt. If you have a known good tube, test it in the same tester with exactly the same settings and then compare those to the tube that you're trying to find out if it's good or bad. Or better yet, if you can, plug it into the original equipment. Put a new tube in that you know is good, maybe one that works in another amp or maybe brand new, although sometimes there were some that came right off the shelf that were bad. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this, and uh, uh, maybe someday, if uh, if there is enough interest, I'll uh, I'll go back into the past again, uh, maybe talk about some old hi-fi amps or uh, old guitar amps and things like that that I left behind me <laughs> back in the dim dark ages. Have fun. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for some more in the future.